Hi, my name is Janae DeBuse and I'm the Live Events Institute of Big Creative Training. Um, in this session, I'd like to show you the top 10 tips on how to set up a successful live events business. So for the first tip, let's go straight into it. Step number one, know your genre. So what do I mean by this? I mean, know exactly what your event's about. Try not to be the jack of all trades. Try not to do every event under the sun. As much as you may get to that point in the future, which would be great. Um, the first thing is know where you're going to start. So are you going to be a music event promoter? Or are you going to be a wedding planner? Are you going to be working in children's events? Are you going to be doing exhibitions? What exactly do you want to start with? What do you have the most passionate about and the most knowledge about, really? Start with one, just the one, and then you can grow. But to begin with, if you're doing music, knowing what genre, start, is it live events, where you're doing massive Glastonbury style things, or are you doing open mics? Are you doing launch shows? There's so many different areas within each sector. So my first thing is to work out what exactly do you do? And there's also two other sides to this. So are you running events for yourself? As in you are the runner of an event, like Glastonbury for example, and you have one big event and that's the event you're known for, or are you going to be running a service? So for example, if you were getting booked to run a wedding, you don't plan that. You get you plan it, but you don't choose when they have their wedding. They choose that. So are you running a service where you give all these different, um, it could be the foods, could be the music, everything else like that you're designing, but they are asking for it rather than you saying, well, I'm doing this. So that's a big, big thing to focus on first of all, knowing your genre, knowing what your speciality is. Second one, know your audience. So if you don't know who you're actually marketing to, you're not going to get very far. So the first thing is, which most people think about, all oh, the age bracket, which is the first one. Uh, so age bracket, say for example, it's for 18 to 24 year olds, that's the usual bracket. Is every 18 year old and 24 year old the same? I don't think so. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. So to be able to think of outside of age, outside of that particular box, that demographic, and going into the location. How much money can they spend? Where do they come from? What's their background? What are they interested in? For example, if you're doing music, you could have people that are interested in rock music. That's one specific set of people. They're not going to be going to, or usually not going to be going to an R&B night. They're not going to be the best people. They're going to have different personalities. Um, other things, personality type, Obviously, the next one, you might have people who are really outgoing, they like to party, they like to dance, they like to really get involved. Um, but you've also got the people who are really not that type. They like to chill, they want to sit, they want to enjoy it. You see, there's a lot of different things to think about. So if you are trying to sell this massive rave of tons of dancing and all this stuff going on, and you've got a bunch of people who you've said, oh, there's seats and you could chill, they're going to be uninterested when they get there and they're not going to be a fan. So what could have been five stars top marks would end up in one star because you didn't promote it properly. So the first thing I would say is know your audience. Is there a specific gender, specific class, preferences, influences, sexuality? So many different things to think about. And you really have to nail this down first of all so you can market properly. Okay, so the third one, choosing your team. Absolutely brilliant if you could do it by yourself. Um, I know that is a big, big task to do because you've got to manage everything from start to finish and you're the only point of contact can be successful. However, I would say choose some people that you can work with, that you can trust. You might have to get contracts in there. There might be some money exchanges. There might have to be an agreement made. A lot of things have to be gone and thought about. Um, but choosing your team is effective. You choose people that you can rely on, not someone who's going to be unreliable or not do what you think they should be doing. Um, this is one of the hardest things because a lot of teams don't always get along. So thinking really deep about who you can trust to work with, who's effective. Do you have creative people that can design things? Do you have people that have got all the critical thinking, you know, when they can think that might not work because, and someone who can actually help with that thought process. So knowing your team, feel free to do it by yourself. It is more than achievable to do it by yourself, but have a think about who you want in your team. Full step, choosing your location. So there's two locations. One is where you're going to work. It could be online. You could work with each other online. That works fine. We've been doing that for a while. Um, however, you've also got to think about, obviously, the location that you're going to be doing these events. If you are in a certain location which is out of the way um, and you're planning to run events in the middle of nowhere, 
that might not be helpful for certain people to come to if they haven't got a car, if they can't travel, or if you are doing a late night event and public transport might be running. Um, there's a lot of things to really think about. So where do you want to situate your event? Is it going to be in different locations? Are you going to tour with it? Is it an open mic night which has got a residency? You've got to think about where that is, how much that will cost, and really, can you make it look how you want it to look based on your idea of your event? There's no point booking a massive, massive stadium expecting millions of people to run up and there's only five people coming because it's going to look quite dead. So um, the biggest thing is thinking where you're going to be based, where is your actual event going to run? Okay, so the fifth step, know your competition. Chances are you're not the only one who's doing this type of event, which is not a bad thing. Um, it just means that you can either learn from them um, of what they've done really, really good, um, or you can learn from them as in what they haven't done so well and you think, I could do better than that. So knowing who you're against, try not to have nights on the same night as them if it's, if it's a regular evening, for example. If you run a Thursday night event and the biggest competitor has a Thursday night event, chances are you're not going to have the best turnout. So really knowing your competition. A lot of people are not on their own. Most things have been already thought of. So if you've got a niche market where there's no one else doing anything like what you're doing, brilliant. Really, really brilliant. However, chances are there's someone who's had that idea before. So really do your research. Don't just think, oh, I've got this one idea and it's going to be amazing. Try to have a good think about who your competition is. Research them. Go to their events. Find out how you felt. What would you change? That's one of the biggest things. Now, bear in mind, all these steps so far are things you should do before you even think about setting up that event and booking that venue. This is just the thought process. All right? So step number six, setting your budget. How much money have you got to spend on your event? Now, back from the first part, when I was talking about two different types of event, the one is where people would book you to do their event, in which case they will pay for it. They'll pay you money for getting the food, getting the service, getting the decorations done. So that's their money. You've got the money. However, if you're trying to run an event by yourself and it's just your event, it's a new launch night or it's a new exhibition, you've got to find that money from somewhere. How are you going to do that? Is it going to be funding? Is it going to be out of your own pocket? Are you going to have a team which you're going to put money into it? Can you apply for a grant somewhere? So everything costs money. The venue will potentially cost money. If you can get it for free, brilliant. Chances are it's going to be a little clause in there which will make you spend something to achieve something. There's going to be a lot of little ties in there. So knowing how much you've got to spend and if you can find people to do things for cheap or for free on a favour basis, you know, there's a lot of things you can think about. So setting your budget, how much can you spend on the venue, on the promotion, on the show itself? If you're doing music, can you pay the artists? If you can't pay the artists, there's got to be something in it for them. I think some people like the exposure, so that might be a brilliant thing. But if you can't guarantee the turnout, that might not be good. So you've got to really think about these things. Step number seven is set your price. So different to budget, this is how much you're going to charge. So if you are doing a music night, for example, you could be charging £5 on the door, which if you've got 100 people in, that's £500. Not a bad start. However, if you have set it up too high, so £20 on the door, thinking, yeah, that's fine, it's £20, and trying to work out how much money you need, £20 on the door, I would expect to be going to a concert for that. So I'm expecting big artists, I'm expecting a full show, I'm expecting a lot of things right there for that £20 line. People are very tired, they don't want to spend money, they want to get things for free. So how can you incentivise that? How can you make them depart with that £20 they've got in their hand? <laughs> what can you do? So. That's one of the biggest things, is how much do you think your product's worth? Again, if you're doing weddings and that's the kind of service that you're running, what would you charge for your service, for the time, for the amount of things you've got to buy for it? Maybe research again, finding out what other companies are doing. What's the best practice? So setting your price is a completely huge part of what you're doing because that's how you're going to make your money. That's how your business is going to be able to work. So... That's a big part. You can't expect too much, but you can't go too little. Otherwise, you're in a bad pocket. So setting your price is another massive point in it. Creating your brand. Now, this is all after the thought process of what you're going to do. You need to know what you're called. Is it catchy? Has it got a distinctive logo? Do you have a slogan? 
like for example Nike just do it for example that's everyone knows about that or I'm loving it not done horse obviously they're different types of brands but what can you do how can you make your brand have a good name have good design have a uniform so when you look online you recognize it instantly how can you make sure your brand's got that and that it represents what your style is there's certain colors that you might use um, for example, pink is quite a young colour. If you think of soup drug, for example, it's quite young, it's quite youthful. Like on this slide around the edge, you can see there's lots of pink there. It looks quite young, quite feminine as well. That might not be the image you want, so you might think, hmm, maybe I want red. But all those things, it's very, very particular. And you've got to think about the font as well. So there's a lot of thought process in this brand. And I feel that it's good to research again. I'm always going to say research. Um, but who and what? Do you want to aspire to be? Do you want to look professional? Do you want to look fun? Do you want to look sophisticated? What is it you're trying to achieve? Your brand, your logo, your name has to be exactly that before you even start, before you can open your mouth, someone's going to look at that brand. So the first thing really is to think of what, what do you want to look like? What is the first impression when you display your new company to someone? What do you want them to see? Because that's going to be plastered on your flyers, it's going to be on your website, on your social media, that's everywhere. So your brand is a massive, massive part of it. And it takes quite a while to get this nailed down. Even asking people what they think, getting some feedback, that's, that's another huge part. Step nine, create your content. That goes on from your brand. So it's a long process. As you see, there's nine steps which should take some time. But creating your content. So once you've got your brand and your logos and all those kind of things, you need to have something which is going to draw people in. Is it flyers? Is it a banner? Is it a video? Do you have any footage or examples of what you want people to think your event's going to be like? Do you have offers? Do you have any merchandise? Do you have something which is going to really make people want to look or click? Now, you all know, I'm sure, about the scrolling thing. You just scroll. You don't really look at anything. You just scroll until something catches your eye. What's going to catch your eye? Sometimes for you, it might be the name of a person because you recognize that name and you think, well, I'm going to look at their post because I know them. If you're a brand, what's going to make someone look? It might be a favorite brand. Do you know what I mean? You might think, oh, there's an offer there. Let me have a look at post or something. How can you be that favorite brand? What can you make your videos look like? What can you make your designs look like, your page look like? What can you do to get someone to click? Because right now, everyone scrolls and they miss everything. You might see it, but not look at it. If you see what I mean, it's quite a complex thing. So being able to master that, being able to not put out rubbish, because as much as you want to put out something to make sure you're still relevant, you want to make sure that that's quality rather than quantity. So that's another massive part. And to start a company, you need to have a massive background. I'm saying having more than one video, clearly, you should have 10 videos ready. So you're not always having to create something quickly. You're already just dropping them and sending them out and sending them to who's going to be reading or watching or reviewing your company, maybe looking for you for a service. So something like that is huge. Offers, I believe, are one of the biggest things. Discounts, buy one, get one freeze, or you get a discount if you bring X, Y, Z people, or early bird, if you're there early, you get a drinks ticket, or whatever it is, something to make them really want to come. Maybe it's you've designed, it, designed a... Um, a set of t-shirt, for example, and someone wants that t-shirt because it looks good. What can you do for that? So all these things, content-wise, you know is very important. You are a consumer, I assume, of <laughs> um, tons of social media daily, day in, day out, and you're always getting emails and everything. You've got to think about that as well. So this is a huge, huge, huge part. And then finally, the last point, getting online. So now you've done all that research, you planned everything, you know where you're going to be, how much it's going to cost, how much you can spend, all the ticket prices. You now need to start getting online, making people aware that you exist, making people aware of your idea of an event. Have you set the date yet? If not, then you could be suggesting when would you like this date to happen? And getting feedback from a potential audience. What would they want to see? And what artists would they prefer to book? You know, there's so many different things to think about. And once you're online, you can then start building an audience. But right now, at this stage, after doing all those 10 steps, right now you've got a brand and no one knows about it. 
So from that point, you need to get that audience, all that target audience that you mentioned, that I mentioned on slide two, that's got to be achieved. How are you going to get to those people? How do you get to an 18-year-old? How do you get to specifically females if that's who you're approaching? How are you going to get to someone who has lots of money to burn? How are you going to get to those people? Such a massive, massive point. Um, so I would suggest, obviously, as you're going to be joining live events very soon, um, and this is going to be one of the biggest things, how to market, how to build your brand, how to develop yourself. These 10 tips, I would say, watch over them again and think about exactly what you can do to start yourself to get ready. Because thinking of all this um, with a short time span is difficult. So think ahead, think of what you want to be in the future when you achieve this course, when you get two years down the line and you've achieved this qualification, what's your business going to be? How are you going to start? How are you going to make money and be that entrepreneur? How are you going to do that? So these 10 tips, really think about them, write them down and have a plan, a business plan, something where you can actually address each point and really think about what's best for you, best for your company, best for what you can do. So after all that, thank you for watching. Um, obviously, you'll see me in September. Um, if you'd like to follow us, please go to We Are BCE on all social media platforms. And if you have any questions, obviously you can contact us through that. Um, if not, I will speak to you in September. Thank you for watching.